Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. I want to celebrate my birthday somewhere exotic, and that's why I'm here in Madagascar. And I'm winging it from the beginning to the end. So here's what to expect in the rest of the video. Perhaps winging it wasn't the best idea, but let's start from the beginning. Camera crew, new seats for the flight. journey really begins. So we went from a 16 and a half hour flight from Atlanta all the way to Johannesburg. We had to stay a night in Johannesburg and now we're on this flight to Madagascar and we'll be there in a couple hours. Now it's time to get our car and hit the road. left the city and this is Ramir by the way he's gonna be throughout the video either recording driving when I'm not driving carrying my bags <laughs> whatever it takes whatever, whatever it takes it to takes. make this video but it's gonna happen we couldn't really record too much of the city because the moment we got out the airport as you can imagine everybody was trying to scheme everybody was trying to either take us to the wrong places guide us the wrong way make money off of us maybe even try to rob us I don't know so here's the game plan. The game plan is we're going to road trip and we don't have actually a very legit and set in stone plan. So we're kind of winging it. But we do know we have point of interest. Uh, there's this avenue, uh, which I think is called Avenue of Barbos, right? Barbos. And it's where you see those famous trees of uh, Madagascar. And it's just one long, I don't know if it's like a mile, but it's very long and that's all is there. So that's our main goal right now. And that's about 11 hours away from the capital. And we left not too long ago, so we still have like 10 hours, but it's not advisable to drive at night. So we're going to maybe, unless we feel daring and brave, right, I guess we'll, maybe play we'll push through, you. but more than likely we'll try to pull over in the town that's not too far from it and stay overnight. And without surprise, we felt daring. to find a hotel or something or get somewhere close to a tree no we're not we're not doing that we're too <laughs> tired the roads are really bad it's raining really bad so we found like a little ditch that we're hiding in and just to show you how <laughs> how bad it really is out in here. the middle of nowhere watch all right i'm gonna show you what good night looks like
Yeah. Good night, guys. All right, good night. After an uncomfortable night, Ramir had enough energy to drive us to Morandava, the town closest to the trees, where we freshened up and got back to it. How was that? Pretty fun. A little turbulent. We're not even, how many minutes we got left of that 11, road? 11, 11 more of this turbulent road. 11 more minutes of this turbulent road. It's actually pretty fun to be honest. Time to hit the road and find the closest beach. After all this driving, we can finally enjoy a beach day. Or not. Yeah. I guess we're back on the road. But first, a quick pit stop on Mars. Now for the part you've been waiting for. How did we become friends with this guy? Well, we wanted to see a lemur rainforest located on the other side of the island. A journey Google Maps said would be eight hours. This meant we'd be on a road called the RN35, which for the first three hours was fine, but slowly became dirt road. And then this happened. It says we're on it and it goes that way. And that way has absolutely no road that exists. Currently, we are so lost right now that even the locals are all watching us. I don't even know if you can see them. They're all literally just gathering up and watching us. Moments later, we got stuck in some mud. And luckily, some of those locals came to help. We don't know where we are. And now we're going across this river looking for a main road. And without these locals, we could not do any of it. We learned that the bridge had been washed away, with both sides connected to absolutely nothing. So we were guided on a different path. Yo, these guys are just literally running with us, Somebody. finding us a road right now in the middle of absolutely right. nowhere. So we're in knee deep water here okay. with these kids. Oh, it's it's like, what? Oh, they're gonna push. Oh, oh shit, fuck. Shit, 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 shit. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep going, push it, 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 push it. These guys, uh, we just paid them a little bit of money. If you guys can look at the road that we're on, it's not even a freaking road. Um, we realized the bridge that we're supposed to cross broke. Thank you! And, uh, yo, did we really do that? That's some top gear shit. We literally did. <laughs> We Dude, what just did, happened, bro? We literally did a Top Gear thing. <laughs> Yo, but hey, it's not a Top Gear thing. It's just a Sebastian thing, all right? Okay, but now, where are we? Uh, we're on the road, dude. We're on where? the road. Well, I don't know, but we're on it. That's the road, I guess. Our GoPro died, but luckily it captured some of our thoughts before it did. The amount that this road has changed, still five and a half hours. 
Dude, this just looks like it's just never gonna end for us. No, no, this and is not. This is not this the is road. This it. Google Maps is fucking us so bad right now. This is where it right says now. we need to go. Dude, this is ro we're we're rock climbing right Should now. Should we? No way. That's a fucking how how. Yeah, I'm gonna get this thing tattooed on myself. The RN35, bro. Oh my god, it's endless. It's endless. We're on this road for a long ass time. How the hell do we even call Avis? Like, what do we say? Send a helicopter? Yeah. Oh, that's another scratch. I feel like we're climbing and climbing and we're just gonna have to call for help. This is ridiculous. Many of you might be wondering why we didn't turn back. Well, we lost service, so rerouting wasn't an option. Also, we were making progress along our route. And honestly, we weren't afraid of a little adventure. So turning around didn't cross our minds. Yet. All right, after driving for I don't know how long already with all those nasty roads, at least we have this. I don't know how long it's gonna last, but it, it feels really good right now. <laughs> it feels amazing. There's some hope. This is like a highway right now. There's like some hope too. But we do have a nice view out there with the nice sunset. After that short-lived moment, things progressively got worse. This is the road. This is that they say is the road. This is insane. This is so. Yeah, should I check? Oh man, uh, we have no choice now, right? No. Nope. Oh man, we got lightning. Rain is coming in. And this this looks like a cliff, man. Oh, it's gonna scrape so bad right now. Oh shit! It's unreal. Yo, this cannot unreal. be a road. Unreal. Easy, 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 easy. This is what we're going through. <sighs> the roads here are now became brutal. What you're seeing now is nothing compared to what we dealt with throughout the night. At one point, our SUV got stuck in a rocky trench completely sideways, and I cannot believe we managed to keep going. Looking back, I wish I took even a two second video for you guys, but recording was the last thing on my mind. Eventually, the road smoothed out. Still driving, uh, we somehow got into the clouds of everything. But here's one thing we realize: what Google Maps is saying has not lied to us. As sketchy as it sounds, it's the it route. Always ends up being the route. It's just this: the route has just the been route is ridiculous. Really ridiculous. We're in the right. clouds right now. This is actually the best road so far. I don't mind this. Even if we have to do this for a couple hours, I don't mind this. Everything else is so stressful. This is all so, yeah. the emotions. I feel excitement, stressed out, anxiety. Not a little scared lie. because there's random people here. That's like the weirdest part. There's people in the mountains. Just standing there, just watching. At one point, we crossed two men. One laying on the side of the road and the other desperately waving us down. But I didn't stop. After passing both men, they began following us with flashlights. Then the roads turned into a maze, some ways leading to dead ends and even cliffs. We were lost for two hours and felt fear for the first time, and even contemplated turning back. Luckily, somehow we found the right road. Uh, Sebastian's been driving for um, more than 12 hours now, um, through climbs, getting stuck, going through rivers, lakes, other water, and uh, this is a map right now. We don't really know, we're not on the blue line. Uh, we got lost for about two hours. Then, this happened. It's the next day. We slept in the car, stuck in the mud. I hate this road. <laughs> Some locals this morning to help us out. Um, hopefully we can get out of here. We're uh, stuck for the night here, pretty much all night after 12 hours of driving. We're still stuck here and it's uh, beginning to rain now. So these guys have some shovels, they can give us a hand. Hopefully we'll pay them off and then uh, get this going. Eventually, we got out. Even though we're still hours and hours away, supposedly. At least we have a beautiful view, right? <laughs> the roads are still horrible. Oh. 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 It's a 
about to rain. It's pretty bad. Yeah, this thing is. Yeah, we destroyed this thing, huh? The road has still not gotten any better. And soon we wish there was a road. Seven hours a road, and this is. A road. road here, and that's the other part of the road on that side. Okay. So we turned around and made our own path, ultimately finding our route. The roads became kind and smooth. There seemed to be a light at the end of this tunnel, but then the worst happened. The current situation is, is really bad. This is full throttle. The car shooting out oil and smoke. We're just gonna ride this until the engine explodes. I sent out an SOS, not even joking, on my phone. Don't know what it does. I'm assuming it's pinging where we are. I mean, we're in the worst possible scenario. We're still 200 kilometers away from, from the city. From the city that we were going to. Our only hope is that on the 50th mile, I mean kilometer that there's a turn and it goes into a major road and maybe we'll find a cop or I don't know, something. But if it turns out to be one of these roads that we've been driving for, dude, we're it's been like almost two days. Yeah. And we're screwed. I don't know. I don't know. I don't even know if you guys are gonna see the video. We'll see. All right. That's it. We're dumping the car. And we're gonna have to start hiking. And we're, we're far away. And here's where we abandoned the SUV. And if you're wondering, how do they know the coordinates? That's because it's the first time in two days that we actually had service. So this part of the story, we're gonna say like this. Simply because we knew we were in danger, we weren't gonna pull out any cameras, and we just wanted to get out of there. So let's backtrack. We passed two dirt bikes before we abandoned the SUV. And we knew that they do things like this in Madagascar to set up a trap. And soon after we did, I actually run into three guys. So the three men waved us down. They looked like farmers. And then when we got closer, we realized they had axes, spears, mm -hmm. knives. And uh, we didn't understand them because they didn't speak English and we didn't speak French. So we used a little bit of Google Translate, maybe some hand signals. And they pretty much told us that their dirt bikes had got stolen at gunpoint. Yes. And they needed help from us to take them back to their dirt bikes. I Which didn't trust them We didn't want to do. Mm -mm. Didn't trust them at all, so we kept going. And funny enough, what starts happening, the car even breaks down worse than it already is. It's already going half a mile per hour. We start having conversation. We're gonna have to dump this car. We're gonna have to go on foot. Think of everything you need to get rid of from your bag because we're gonna leave it in the truck so that we can leave the truck as bait with the key. And that's what we did. We left on the side of the road and funny enough, what's right next to us? <laughs> so we left everything on the side of the road and three teenagers in a tree of course. were just staring at us the whole time where we were scrummaging mm -hmm. around the car packing our stuff. And I don't even know if they were there in the beginning. We, we kind of felt like they were just spotters from these guys that just passed us. So it kind of was a little terrifying. So we went to the hill where we can get one better service and, and kind of get away from mm -hmm. these guys' view. And that's when we contact friends, family, and try to get with the embassy, police. And that was very short-lived because as we're trying to make progress, So while I'm this on the happens. phone with a friend, I'm looking at Sebastian. Mm -hmm. He's keeping a lookout for me behind my back. And <laughs> so behind his back, another man comes out. Full motorcycle leather, shin guards, elbow guards, mm -hmm. helmet, goggles, the whole nine yards. Same and story, but in English. The same story in perfect English, which was kind of shocking at that time. And he mm -hmm. said he was a teacher at a nearby village. Mm -hmm and he wanted us to either drive him to the motorcycles or walk with him to his town, which he said was 20 minutes away, when my brother was telling me that the nearest town is about two and a half hours away. So his story yeah. did not jive well at all. And he said he didn't know anybody. He was pointing at the kids saying, do you know them? I'm terrified of them, everything like that. And even when we told him our story, he said he doesn't know anyone, right? So I already don't trust anyone. I was on the phone, so I acted I was on the phone with the police. So. I told them, don't worry about it. The police told us to leave the car here. So when they come, we'll take care of your business, our business, everyone's gonna be happy. That flustered him, he walked away, and who does he go to? Those teenagers he doesn't know, supposedly. They start conversating, we knew, this is our time, we gotta get out of here. So we start kind of like going behind the hills, and then we grab some sharp rocks for weapons, and shortly after, all seven people that we passed, in the taunting. distance, they're just like taunting us in the background. And like you say, 
So <laughs> at this point, we we're glad they kind of weren't following us. So it was but. kind of like a good thing almost. But that was really short lived quickly because my only next thoughts were they're just we're walking into a trap. They're yeah. not chasing us for a reason. Yeah, One, exactly. they know they're going to get us somewhere down the road. And it was just a very like scary feeling at that point. But we had no choice. So we kept trucking along. And to make it even more scary, what do we hear? Not even like 20 minutes after, a dirt bike. We hear it in the distance and instinctively, we just run off to the side. I throw myself in the bush, I hide in there. He throws himself in the dirt and we waited. And what do we see? Two guys with AK-47s just slowly riding up the road, looking. I don't even remember breathing at all. That's, that's how terrified I was, because I was thinking. I mean, just stop and think in that position. Yeah, You're think in a about different it. country. No food, no water, no communication, no you don't weapons, know the language, no weapons, nothing. And two guys, while you're buried in dirt and in a bush, two guys with AK 47s mm -hmm. passing you. And then they somehow didn't see us. I don't know how. I'm thankful they didn't. And we just stood there for a little bit longer, felt when it was safe, and kept going. And that whole hike was probably the most stressful. We felt Terrifying. every minute of that hike, because every moment, imagine any noise you hear, you stop. Right. Is that is that a bike? No, it's not. Okay, let's right. keep going. Like that was that was the next two hours almost. More, probably yeah. more, because we, we don't even. But somehow, miraculously, we made it to the town. So we're walking through a random town, and it feels like we're Hollywood all stars. Because well, I saw a ghost. I seen a ghost in Sebastian, maybe. I don't know. Like movie stars right now, though. Pretty crazy. This is wild. Our future fans of the world. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're all nervous. <laughs> oh. Oh. The villagers gave us one of their own homes to stay in as we waited for the town leader. And that's where we're spending the night in this random town. Buried in the mountains, which nobody really knows about in this world, I guess. Pretty crazy. And the town leader is who you probably guessed, Mr. AK himself. We came to an agreement the night before that he would take us to the closest city, which was two hours away on bike. He fulfilled his promise and escorted us to a van that was heading north. We later transferred onto another van heading to the capital, and 12 hours later, we were stopped by officials that were looking for us. They personally drove us to a hotel by the airport. In the end, do I regret this trip? Not at all. We got to see Madagascar in its rawest form, from its densely populated city to its untouched, beautiful landscape. Sure, we had some bad luck. Okay, maybe a lot. But through it all, we saw a good side of humanity. We were helped by complete strangers and even welcome to their homes. These are people we'll probably never see again, but forever leave a deep impression in our lives. Madagascar is a hidden gem worth seeing, but perhaps don't wing it like we did, and avoid the RN35. Thank you for watching.